It was said to me a number of years ago by the Holy Spirit one evening that the glory of God is a journey. The Holy Spirit was preempting the fact that I would find myself on a journey. Now, as you know, a journey takes place in stages. It's not done in one day, generally speaking, because it's a time period. I would find myself journeying in understanding how God's glory works, and that's important. The Bible says that we go from glory to glory to glory. That underscores the fact that there's not just one level of glory, and that what was true of that level of glory may become obsolete when you get to this glory. And we get here, and Ezekiel talks about it, starts off at ankle, goes to knee deep, then it can go up to um, waist, shoulder, and then you're overwhelmed. They are levels of manifestation, of transformation that happens by the glory of God. I had a very interesting tenure in Wellington that was the catalyst. It was a seven-year period, and I'd come to understand frequency. I've got a book called New Sound Revolution, which um, for you, the reader, and the student, if I may say, it will give you the opportunity of understanding what was involved in that journey. That journey would become a catalyst, very profound. I'd find as a result of coming out of that tenure, I'd be at a different level. My whole ministry spectrum would change. The glory of God would manifest a lot, which is the case today in my ministry. But I first had to come to understand the protocols that were associated. You may say, why rawwoodylove.com? Well, because we're in a supernatural hour. The birth of Jesus Christ, you know, not one event surrounding his birth was natural. It was all supernatural. There were visions, prophecies, warnings, dreams, you know, signs, wonders taking place. And um, that was a supernatural manifestation supporting the fact that God was doing something unique for that time. Well, when God looks to birth a new thing, same scenario, it's always on a supernatural plane. Always on a supernatural plane. And that's where we are today. The scriptures tell us, cast your bread upon the waters. Bread speaks about portion. And then it goes on to say that you may find it after many days. Well, that speaks about legacy, after many days. The portion of King David is found today, after many days. Hear what I'm saying. The portion of Moses is found today, after many days. The portion of Elijah, Joshua, Elisha is found after many days. It's all about preserving the legacy. You may say, why rawwoodylove.com? For that reason, <laughs> to preserve the legacy. And so that you, the viewer may be stimulated, encouraged, impacted, empowered, so that you can come to an upgraded level in Iwatu, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and that you may know him. You know, one of the interesting things that the Lord did say to me and me about my tenure in Wellington, that seven-year period, the road in which my building was on is called Sea View Road. Interesting, he said it was at Wellington that I got to see a new view of him. Amazing, isn't it? I got to see view, a new view of him. That's where things started to change. So, rawwoodylove.com is a point of identification so that you, the viewer, the reader, the student may be empowered with the information that's on the site. Kia kaha, God bless, Jesus is Lord.